Okay, up next, Marmy Rock Show. Very excited to have Reed Henry with us. Now, uh, Reed is part of a brand new band. We're always bringing the best new music here. The band is called Never Say Die out of Ontario, Canada. And uh, they've already broken into our Golden Dozen with their first single at number nine. So, Reed, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So I'm excited to hear the story behind your band because everyone will remember you from, you know, a <laughs> legendary band, really, by Darkest Days. You well, all kinds of flash on the scene those guys made, and you, of course, part of that band. So tell us how uh, Never Say Die formed. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were, um, we were, we'd made our second record and did, uh, that six month run with Nickelback, uh, and Bush. And, uh, we were coming off of all of that. We went home for Christmas and, um, First, uh, we lost our guitar player, Sal, who went on to also sing in his own band. And then uh, Matt had joined and had, you know, this amazing opportunity to sing with, like, Three Days Grace, which is obviously his brother's band, and that's obviously a dream come true for him, and we were super proud of him. Um, but at the time, we didn't really have a rock band to play in anymore because, obviously, Matt had moved on to, uh, to play with those guys. So for a little while, we kind of just kept writing, and my, myself and Brendan, um, and uh, and Doug went off uh, and formed his own country band as well. So for a minute there, we were just kind of like not sure what to do musically. And, uh, you know, we experimented a little bit. I got to play in some really cool bands um, for a little while, as did Brandon. And uh, just missed playing rock music together. So I called Brandon and... Uh, he ended up meeting up with um, a great guy, Mike Langford, uh, and he, as well as Brandon and myself, and the guitar player that Mike knew, Dane Hartzell, uh, started writing some songs together, and uh, it just kind of felt right and came together that way, and uh, and we started Never Say Die, which to us meant um, you know, the British idiom means to not give up in the face of adversity, and I felt like that kind of summed up what we were doing. Um, especially given the nature of the music business right now with hard rock, at least in Canada, it's, it's definitely taking a backseat to things like country and, um, and alternative, but we just, you know, we love what we love and we want to make great metal and keep playing music. So, um, that's kind of how the band started. Now, you just kind of casually mentioned the name Mike Langford there, but, uh, how did that enter in? Because he's worked with some pretty monster sized bands. Uh, yeah. Well. He's a pretty rad dude. He actually, he, uh, he met my mom at a show, um, that she was at for like Toronto's Indie Week. And, uh, and my mom was like, you should start, like, play. I don't know actually how the conversation went. I don't, I wasn't there. But for whatever, and for whatever reason, he, uh, he hit me up on Facebook and, uh, and was like, do you want to play in this band that I'm playing? And we'd love to have you. And I was like, that's super awesome. So we started playing music together that way. Dane was also in that band, and uh, and we just kind of met through there, which was really funny. But yeah, Mike's amazing. He he produced the record that we uh, were making. We made sixty percent of it right now, but he uh, yeah, he produced the song that you've heard and that we put out um, last week, Automatic. And it's a dream come true to be able to just have so much of these amazing people in a band with me that uh, that you know we can just do stuff and take. Um, you know, uh, what would used to be like a label's a creative department and, you know, outside producers and stuff and internalize all of that within the band is, is really cool. So for people that are used to what your role was with My Darkest Day, are you are you a straight-up front man in this band? Or are you playing keys or what's your role in the band? Um, no, I'm just know? straight up front man. I am singing lead vocals and uh, and I played some of the guitar on the, on the record, but I'm, I'm not so far anyway, at least in rehearsal, uh, playing guitar at all live, just singing. So it's it's a nice departure from playing keyboards and rhythm guitar for sure. Although I sang by the end of it, I was singing a lot of backup vocals in MDD, and, and Matt and I sang together a whole lot. So he definitely helped me as a singer grow. Now, is this your first time assuming that role? You know, prior to my darkest days, have you been a front man in other bands before? Not really, like terrible punk bands in high school or something, <laughs> but not really like not professionally. No, so it's it's very exciting for sure. People are going to be excited to see that. So um, <laughs> the, the first single, Automatic, definitely, uh, you know, folks that were a fan of My Dark Days, it has a little bit of that vibe, too, yeah. you know, that kind of stylistically. Will the rest of the music coming out, are fans of My Dark Days been appreciated? Is it that same sort of kind of vibe? Uh huh. I hope so. I mean, that's definitely what we were trying to cater to is, is you know, there were a lot of people that were like, when is My Darkest Days going to make another record? And we felt, 
you know, we, we were sad because it's like, well, obviously, we don't, like, it's so much to ask of somebody like Matt to, you know, obviously it's so much of his time is dedicated and we can't focus, you know, make our friend lose focus for something that isn't going to, just doesn't make sense timing wise. So I hope that, um, that we can continue on My Darkest Days, at least for Brennan and I in this way and give those people who are looking for more of My Darkest Days something to, uh, that makes sense to them as well. So, of course, what everybody's going to want to know, are, are we uh, working on a full album, or, or do we expect to see some sing- more singles coming out, or when might we see an album? <laughs> um, well, we, we're still, we're about, we have six out of ten songs done, and we have like a thousand other random ideas that are kind of <laughs> half done. Uh, we're going to try and finish the record before the end of the year, so we have something to uh, to shop around and to just like, you know, get out there uh, in the early 2017 vibes. But before then, and like we'd like to carry this on, given the fact that we're you know Mike's in the band, Mike Lankford is in the band, we can just keep making music, and uh, and we're looking to put out another song to kind of keep people's interest uh, within the next month or two, and uh, just kind of keep putting music out. So uh, when would you expect not to push you guys too fast? But when do you think <laughs> we might start seeing the band play live? Well, uh, we're kind of having some meetings and doing some some business stuff since we sort of ninja launched and just kind of popped out of thin air um it's it, you know we're doing some of the stuff that i think a lot of bands sort of do i don't know just over the course of their first year we're just doing it all at the same time right now um so yeah i mean hopefully we'll get uh we'll get some u.s dates i mean sooner than later we've, we've already had a couple of things that we're talking to other bands and some just random industry people about playing in the states and as early as January, February, uh, and definitely I'd like to play at least a show in Toronto <laughs> in November or December, but yeah, um, so very soon, very soon. So um, you guys have had a pretty, uh, you know, I found you right away, you've had a pretty nice start uh, on social media uh, with, the, uh-huh. with the band. Have you been pretty happy so far with that? Yeah, it's it's been, it's definitely, um, you know, beyond our, our expectations to have 4,000 likes in the first seven days on Facebook, and like, I think we were at like fifteen, seventeen thousand views on YouTube. So people, the people who have heard it, has definitely been listening to it, which which definitely makes us, uh, you know, excited to see that growth. And hopefully, we can just keep pushing that and keep getting that growth uh, higher and higher. Yeah, man, I did a little research on that. Man, your YouTube, you're getting, I think it's something like two hundred and fifty likes to every one unlike. That's a pretty damn good ratio, man. So congratulations. Right. <laughs> Yeah, th- yeah, thanks, man. I mean, I- I'm just glad that everyone doesn't, like, unanimously hate my voice. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a low watermark, but, you know, yeah, definitely relieved that uh, that we had a positive response and not just like a, fuck this guy, you know? <laughs> so I'm definitely happy about that. So, you know, it's the modern world with a new band, what do you think is the most crucial piece these days? Is it radio play? Is it touring or social media? Or what is the most critical, like, factor these days for a new band? Well, I, I think that no matter how you get it, getting that exposure is definitely the most important thing. Whether you get it from, you know, like, social media, like that pop pop singer Sean Mendez blew up from Twitter and numerous other artists have blown up from the Internet, um, or, you know, the traditional way of just massive amounts of radio play, breaking an artist, whatever, you know, there's obviously different ways of achieving the same thing now, but at the end of the day, as long as you're getting exposure and, and people like it, as long as you're making good music, I, I feel like, I think it's a Dave Grohl opinion or philosophy, but I feel like if you make something great, they will come. So I hope that that's true, and we just want to make the best music we can make and, and you know, definitely try and get exposure, but... As long as you're making um, stuff that is genuinely worth people's time and, and can speak to them in some way, I feel like, you know, it's going to attract people. So one of the things that I always found interesting about My Darkest Days is, like, they always seem to play with bands that were heavier than them. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just genre-wise, they were always with bands that were heavier than them. Why, yeah, why does that no. happen? <laughs> I don't know. I think, well, because we're an active rock band, right? And we were definitely too heavy for alternative or, or pop or anything like that. We were a rock band. But uh, we'd find ourselves, like, I remember playing Downsview, Downsview is Donington Park in the U.K. We were playing Download Fest. And, like, we played, and then, like, 15 minutes later, Seven Dust played. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it's a funny contrast for sure. I don't think that'll happen with our new band. We're pretty heavy. 
Yeah, well, hey, man, it was it was meant as a compliment because you guys found your niche with that market, and that that speaks to what you just said. If you write good music, man, it doesn't matter really what what the crowd. You know, the crowd's gonna appreciate it regardless. So, mm-hmm. uh, that's all you, man. So, um, yeah. Hey, uh, so so before I let you go here, let's hit, let folks know where's the best place to go. Where do you want people to go to check out your brand new band? Uh, you can definitely go to facebook dot com slash never say die the band, um, or on Twitter we are never say die ca. Instagram, we're Never Say Die Official. Or you can just go to our website, and it has everything. That's neversaydie.ca. Uh, and, yeah, everything else is linked to there. Awesome, man. So uh, I'm going to direct people, neversaydie.ca. And, uh, man, uh, Reed Henry, it's uh, so good to talk to you, man. The first time I met you, I believe, was at opening up for Papa Roach. So it's been a little bit since I saw <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah, it has. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> And it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you, and uh, I wish you the very uh, best. All right, man. Thank you so much.